This segment of DoD TV's Natural Barn is brought to you by Scent Crusher. Scent off, game on. This week on Winchester and Drury's Natural Born. Oh no, turkey season is off and running, baby. We got the turkey dance party going on. This is my only Jay. My wife and I are going to deliver a baby tomorrow. How many points does this thing have? 13. Are you hooked on deer hunting? Yeah. Oh my. We got it done. That's an exclamation point right there, and that's a wrap. Winchester and Drury Outdoors present Natural Born. It's in your blood. It's in your DNA. For Natural Born cast members Kyle Lamore and J.J. Coley, sir, the clock is ticking. Illinois, turkey, I get the second season, that means I get today and tomorrow. So I get two days, so well, since 6.30, we have heard maybe a couple of owls. And now there's still birds close because they're sounding off once in a great while. Man, they are hinned up earlier this morning. So one long beard, three jakes, and five hens, all in a big group. Hoping that maybe they'll lose those hens that we just saw and come investigate the decoys, kind of come back and, and see what happens. So we'll just sit here. We'll just sit here and hope they show up. And I better get my face mask on. He came and Illinois turkey season is off and running, baby. Woohoo! That was fun. Yes! And you just grow up and come back next year. Gobble little cheeks. April 13th, 2013 probably doesn't seem like a very lucky day, but in this case it sure was. JJ's tied up. His wife is due with their second child on Monday and He's packing bags for the hospital, et cetera, and we're out here trying to kill turkeys. I owe a big thanks to my buddy Chris who stepped in. We're on his farm. Today was the opening day of every second season where I'm at, and it didn't take us long. About two hours, this old boy, he broke away from the rest of the flock, saw the decoy, just took a bee line at 500 yards. He had three jakes dead behind him, and he didn't want to get caught up in that, so he thought it'd be safer to come see us, but it wasn't. Following Kyle's success, J.J. Culliser rolls the dice and hopes he can get his bird before his wife has their baby. With just one morning to hunt, he surrounds himself with two cameramen. We got in here, we're settled in, it's finally light, we're, we're double blinded here. We expected these birds to actually be the west of us and all the hammering that's taken place or took place this morning has been way east of us and I mean way east of us. This is my only Jay, really, because uh, my wife and I are going to deliver a baby tomorrow. So, you know, I got about five, six hours to get this done, and well, we'll see what happens. Stay up to date with our official journal on DruryOutdoors.com. We got a hand fight behind us. We can hear him. There's a gobble. 
Kicking it up, kicking it up, baby. Kicking it up. Two in two days, brother. <laughs> give me some one, my baby. <laughs> yeah. Gee, give me some, brother. We got the uh, turkey dance party going on in here. Good buddy, Chris Dussold over here, man. He's put us on, dude. Thanks. I have seen more birds this year in fields in Illinois than I ever have before. I wasn't with these guys yesterday. Kyle killed one on a completely different side. We're actually a couple miles at least and we're sitting in central Illinois baby and I've been out here for two hours and I put a bird down this longbeard came within oh. three feet of the, oh, three, I could hit him with the gun <laughs> three feet of the blind and we had some movement I thought we were made but the decoys were huge they came right down from behind us yeah <laughs> I gotta go have a baby tomorrow uh, I don't my wife does we did not believe we were in the game this morning we were I'd say four or 500 yards from where they were roosted. We hit the illuminator a couple times, and I think it was just enough noise that it got this, this guy fired up. I gotta give a big thanks to Chris and Kyle for coming out with me this morning, and my wife as well. These guys are gonna continue, hopefully, this luck streak uh, into Kansas. Stick with us, I think uh, we'll be able to put a few more birds on the ground. It's early August, Zach and I and my younger grandson Andrew are out here and uh, we're getting ready to plant our biologic maximum. It takes a lot of work to do this uh, deer hunting right, but uh, it's pretty rewarding too. This deer hunting's tough, ain't it buddy? If grandpa does a good job today, maybe you can shoot a big buck and come back and take a nap. Which one you hope pops out? Okay, bruiser. that bruiser, that's the same deer all through the bottom here. All those pictures are bruiser. Keep up with all the excitement on our official Facebook page. This segment of DOD TV's Natural Barn is brought to you by PSE's Carbon Air Experience Performance. With the biologic bringing the deer, it won't be long for young Andrew Dent. Okay, it's gonna be difficult. Okay. Okay, any other? Put it 
it on his heart. Shit. Let him get weight for a minute. Let him turn again. He'll turn for you. Right there ain't bad. Right there. Right there. Hold on. Don't shoot him when he's walking. Keep it on him, man. Don't stop him. Don't stop, stop him. him. Yep. There you go. Okay. Shoot him. Shoot him, Henry. He hit him, didn't he? I heard him hit. I thought. <laughs> I thought I heard him smoke. I thought him. I could hear it. I thought I could hear it. I don't see him running up the side. Did you have it on his heart? Yeah. What do you think about that, Andrew? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think Andrew just killed a smoker. When you're taking a young hunter out there, you know going into that situation that a lot of things may be out of your control. Is your aim going to be true? Yeah. Many of us have been there. They're so excited. They're not used to the moment. And I think it's just awesome the way John handled it. The best thing you can do is support them, try to calm them down, slow things down, just talk them through the shot. I was so excited. <laughs> Convince them that basically we cannot take a bad shot here. It's not fair to the animal. It's almost like a sport. Just try to keep coaching them through that situation. Hopefully good results will happen. I think you just need to be patient and remember that your actions at that moment can maybe determine whether that child decides to keep hunting or not. Talking them through the process could be the key to their success and give them the confidence to make the shot. Oh, look at that shot. Perfect shot. Get on that thing and tell Zach to get them all down here and tell him to bring the truck and all of them down here. Look at that deer. <laughs> Say big. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. It's Bruiser. He's just killed Bruiser. I just killed Bruiser. Here we are in North Missouri, November 5th. It's opening day of youth season, and Andrew just shot this big buck. This deer was shot almost exactly the same spot Zach shot Thriller in a few years ago, and he died in the same creek that Thriller died in. A uh, beautiful deer. We have a ton of Reconyx pictures of this deer. He come out to check out the biologic uh, winter bulb sugar beets a maximum we have planted behind us this morning and uh, the rest is history. Andrew, you did a wonderful job, you know that? Yeah. Put a perfect shot. shot on it, didn't you? Perfect shot. Are you hooked on deer hunting? Yeah. Yeah, me too. How many points is it? 13. 13 All points. Right. <laughs> give me another five. And give me a hug. Mm. <laughs> It's December, and in Iowa, Mark Drury has his work cut out for him, but he always has a plan. Boy, we have been grinding it, and I know you're probably watching it going, oh yeah, that's tough, gotta hunt every day. And we enjoy it, don't get me wrong, but we enjoy it more when they move. It's a very warm, unseasonably warm December, and that's not great for late season activity. So we're gonna have to buckle down and find where one's walking to have success this late muzzleloader season. When you get into that time frame, you've got to scout, 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 and over scout. I always say I like to spend three or four days scouting for every one day of hunting. It's about MRI, most recent information. We do that scouting not only visually and actually sitting out there looking at the fields, we also do it with our Reconyx cameras. They show you part of the story, but they really don't show you all of the story. That camera's only looking at a space this big. I like to look at a space this big so I can really see what's coming in. I've seen probably three different bucks on different fields. I'm looking to see what bucks are in the area, where they might pop onto that field, and more importantly, what weather conditions and what wind directions they're coming onto that field and using that field during daylight hours. Man, it's so important to keep scouting, and I'll tell you, Mark Jury is the one that really pounded in my head most recent information. The whole season is a scouting mission. Even in late December during the gun seasons, we are still continuing to scout. We never stop scouting. However, I don't think we are able to scout as diligently as we would like to. With limited time off, we like to be in the stand when the time's right. Doesn't mean we don't pay attention to cameras and, and where the sign is, it just makes it tough when you have only a limited amount of time. We are also very diligent on finding food, man. If the food is changing as the season progresses, you have to stay on top of the food. Go where the deer are going, go where the deer are eating, stay on top of them and you'll have a better season. Tweet the Drury's at Drury Outdoors. Let us know about your hunts. Mark Drury has gathered all the most recent information to target one area to hunt, and team member John Williams is ready to fill in on camera. Santa Claus gets you everything you want? Yep. 
In my age, it don't take much. John Williams is up, and what a great fill-in for a camera guy. It is a gorgeous day. The weather's right. The wind that they predicted is actually accurate. It's a west-southwest wind. We're gonna climb into that high-rise hunter and see what Mother Nature has in store for us tonight. We're set up on about three acres of beans. It's surrounded by big cover. We're sitting there on a southwest wind and it should be perfect. It's blowing it out over a pond field. It's the last beans in the area. The bottoms are cut, the ridges are cut. It is the last available food source. Hopefully, we'll get some big bucks on their feet tonight. They've not been moving very well. Hopefully, tonight is the night. We got a shed buck and another rack buck just showed up to the south down here. First two deer on the field, go figure. Won't be long, we'll be seeing deer out here in front of us, I guess. We're sitting there and all of a sudden the buck parade starts. It's buck after buck after buck after buck. And then lo and behold, Big Boy makes his appearance known. He's pretty. He's, he's a big body deer. I, I know the deer. I've had a few pictures of him, but not many. I think he's six or seven, he's old. He's fully mature, that's for sure. We're gonna shoot him, John. Yeah, are you ready to track him? Yeah. I'm recording. Am I blocking your other camera? No. You will move to your right a little bit. It should have killed him. He's going up over the hump, Johnny. Stay on him. He's going down. He's down. <laughs> He's down, baby. Finally! We got it done. We got it done. <laughs> yeah, baby. We got it done. Big balmy evening. And we just killed a giant, John. Big old mature deer. I've got a lot of pictures of him early in the summer. I haven't seen him since. Never laid eyes on him. First time I've ever seen the deer. Awesome. And he's down right there in the field. Well, you've done cool. it, Iowa. That was cool. Let's go recover him real quick. Oh, it's so pretty. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my. He's a lot bigger than I thought he was. What a blessing to end the season just after Christmas with a beautiful, mature, fully mature Iowa 10 point as pretty a 10 as you could possibly ask for. It's the first deer that I've taken on this particular farm. It's a new farm. Keith and Jake owned it last year. They asked me to run cameras and I ran them for them and after the season they talked about selling it and I talked to Tracy. I said, man, what a beautiful farm to own and I said, would it be possible to buy that? We talked about it. We said, you know what? Let's do it. It's so cool when you're hunting a new piece of property and to take a fully mature deer off of it. Pretty cool stuff. He is just gorgeous. I kind of nicknamed this guy the Unknown 10 because I got some pictures of him during the summer, but he was always distant. I never got a really good clear photo of him. And then a few maybe when he was hard horn, I just knew he was a tall tined, tall racked, fully mature deer. And when I saw him come walking over the hill tonight, I was like, that's him, that's the Unknown 10 because I had never seen him before with my eyes. And when I saw him tonight, I was like, wow. It shows you the power of a soybean field. Here it is, December 28th. Haven't seen him all year, and that's the magnet that brought him in. I had about an 80 yard shot at him, and uh, he ran about 50 yards and piled up. Just awesome. What an awesome end to the Iowa season. It doesn't get a whole lot better. Look at this sky, 46 degrees today. It feels like we ought to, uh, ought to be starting the season, not ending it, but that's an exclamation point right there, and that's a wrap. Next week on Winchester and Drury's Natural Born. Muzzle older season's here. Bill's got a really nice buck located. They have been just pounding this bean field of ours. We had another giant on the field. It's just incredible. We are in Minnesota. In the OTC, come through tonight. Yeah, that's a monster.